Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Dinks with Kings. Uh, before we get into tonight's episode, I want to remind everyone to reach out to us on that social media at Dinks with Kinks on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We've had so many people come out and reach out to us and talk to us. And we love hearing from people about their kinks, their fetishes. If we cover one that you that you're into, tell us how we did. Uh, tell us your side of it. Um, if not, tell us to cover something that you're into. If you're listening to this and you're hey, they haven't covered my kink, tell us about that. I am your host, uh, John Dondero, and with me, as always, the very stunning, the always mysterious. Ever so slightly alluring, Mr. Shep. Good evening. And a woman who, uh, though never needs it, will always get it. A very sexy introduction because she fine as fuck. Just saying. I don't have to do the alliteration. She's just sexy. Miss Rebecca. Good evening, everyone. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't, um, I'm not really good with words when I'm combining, like, you know, creating, like, a story out of, um, oh, a little man. bit of what we're doing. You didn't even get 10 seconds in. <laughs> you guys gotta realize now that I do our intros based on what we're talking about and, like, how I'm gonna mess with it. I'm, like, 10 seconds Especially since we, we missed last week, uh, there was no episode because nature said, uh, no, John, you cannot record. We're going to make a tree fall on your car. And I couldn't get home. Yeah. Yeah. So, but <laughs> we're back. The kink shall not be stopped. And we're going to write about it in the history books and in good fiction. For tonight, <laughs> we are talking about erotic literature. Or erotica. Which is I probably one of my favorite. This. It has the coolest name of any kink. Yeah. Like anything, like, okay, there's porn. That's not a very sexy name. People don't go, I'm going to settle down with some porn or <laughs> smut. But erotica? That just sounds cool. I think Shep and I should have a contest so he says it's sexier. Shep, say Why? erotica. Because you'd win every time? I don't Since think so. That I think it'd be a. that guy. Yeah. Like, what? I think it. Listen, I, yeah, I, I think okay, it would yeah, be a I, hard I competition. I know. I surrender. I surrender. Might, might be a <laughs> semi hard competition. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Go ahead and give us your best erotica. All right, Chevy, you first. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to go first. <laughs> Just saying the word erotica. There it is. Oh my God, that's it right there. I know. I I don't need to go because I already came. <laughs> no, you have to go now. No, you. <laughs> Your idea, you gotta you gotta follow okay. through. Erotica. That is a hard competition because I know I'm I'm hard for both of those. <laughs> I couldn't tell you who won. Uh, but no, erotica. Erotic literature. Uh, the infamous dirty tales. Uh, that have been around since people wrote shit down. I, I mean, love the two things. I love erotica. That, that was actually my first porn. Erotica was my first porn. Yeah. That's because you can absolutely do anything. Like I, okay, so my day job is I work at a library. I love to read. Reading mm-hmm. gives me great pleasure. Typically, um, a lot of times I do watch a lot of porn because it is easier to do that with one hand than to read one-handed. Um, There's a lot of things you can do one-handed, though. (laughs) (laughs) There are a lot of things you can do one-handed. Do you read erotica, Shep? Read? No. Back in the day, I used to write little stories and stuff, but not really read. Hey, listen, it, it, it's one of those things. It's not for everyone. Like, people, you you have to have, you have to have possess a level of, like, suspension of disbelief. Mm-hmm. 
and you have to be good at writing. There's there's some I've read some erotica that's like, okay, this is a really good story, but you're using the wrong terms for genitalia. Your uh, and, loins. Like, I don't some... want to hear about anybody's lo- my throbbing loin. Throbbing loin. That yes. <laughs> I mean, unless you want to go with more primal erotica, or if you go into fantasy werewolf type erotica, then loins might be appropriate. I mean, loins might, okay. Loins is an appropriate term, but uh, there are certain keywords. There are keywords that I'm like, will throw me off. And if if the artist is getting too uh, fanciful with the genitalia, I hate it when they get wordy. I hate it when they get too wordy. I'm like, this is supposed to be porn in word form. Like, Turn me on. Talk dirty to me. Like, talk. I want to be the reader that's like, talk dirty to me. I want you to articulate the sounds. I want you to like all the things. Yes. Yeah. I've never been a fan of, of reading it. I always want to either experience it or just articulate it myself. Yeah. I mean, I can get behind that. Like, wanting to tell the stories. I do love telling a good, sexy story. I love, uh, I want, uh, in a relationship. Uh, talked a girl through masturbating by telling her a story. Like it was sexy to- story time and she masturbated and finished to me just telling her this story, this naughty story. I think that's where, because um, erotica, I mean, is a predominantly female kink. It's a predominantly, like a lot of, a lot of women, uh, you know, read and experience experience erotica and and it's it's because uh, it's just tell us a story tell us you like don't send us a pic like whereas in men have typically typically not always but are typically visual like talk to us turn us on with mm-hmm. our brain and i think that that's what like erotica does it, erotica allows the allows you to get turned on mentally so that your body physically reacts to that back in the day going through bookstores or most likely like grocery stores and such and you know if you see you saw Fabio on the cover of, of a novel you know where that novel is going oh absolutely smut <laughs> and I, I use that term in in the sense of exactly what it is um, like erotica is another word but you always heard the smut novels and I remember growing up, you know, guys like, girls don't like porn. I'm like, no, they don't like watching it. Now, you hand them a story? Watch your girls become how flushed. how talented one hand she is. Mm-hmm. That is how I got my lesbian experiences when I was growing up is the internet when the internet was first invented of course porn was there and I was able to find lesbian erotica and so with my upbringing as it were I it's not necessarily like I could go out and look up lesbian porn or find lesbian anyone in in my area and so I I went on and I found lesbian erotica and it's just that's how I mean I still to this day I love lesbian erotica I think it's, it's one of my favorites and there's some actual science behind why uh, women prefer like more women uh, and prefer erotica over uh, like visual stuff like that and it's it's a two base fold thing and I'm about to be a white guy explaining a woman's body and we know how well that usually goes over so yes, I'm gonna have a rude yeah, I'm going to have a ruse back up and go, I told him these facts. It's okay. Um, a woman usually, to for a woman to properly get off, and a gentleman out here, this is for you. This is your information so you know how to properly orgasm a woman. Two things have to happen. Mental stimulation and heart rate. And those... Guys don't need either of those. So men think of orgasms. And we talked about this on our live stream, which is on twitch.tv. The Dondera, uh, slash the Dondera every Friday night at 10 p.m. But men orgasms are rub junk, 
it happens and everyone's happy. Women, it's a much more complex situation that if you don't have um, mental stimulation along with um, heart rate, it's a much harder task. And erotica stimulates both the hippocampus and your own imagination stimulates your heartbeat. Mm -hmm. So reading triggers an orgasm much faster than just seeing flashing lights mm -hmm. on a television screen. Now, please tell me I'm correct in everything I just said, and I'm not just mansplaining. <laughs> oh, you want me to verify your facts, huh? Verify, verify my facts. Verify yeah, your I'm, uh, I'm not trying to mansplain. I'm just trying to talk science. That I'll learn. <laughs> yeah. I learn from women. I am just repeating what I learn from women. <laughs> well, that all is very correct. You are correct, and of course, we come on here trying, trying to be correct. Um, and when you stimulate your imagination, when you, when a female gets turned on, um, that's why foreplay and words are way more important. You want to get your woman turned on. Don't send her a dick pic, send her a long text about all of the things you want to do with her. Send her an ero erotic text and sexting is erotica in a, in, in its mm -hmm. own, you know, digital form. And so you want to get your woman hot and ready for you whenever send her a long text. Don't send her a dick pic because in her head, her heart rate's going up because she's imagining you doing these things to her. And she's, it's all of that thing. It's start, it's all tied into that. Um, physiological response but I'm telling you right now for all of our listeners who all think that you know dick pics are going to impress somebody don't either send her a long sexy te text about all the things you want to do to her or send her a video of you getting off calling her name so she can hear you calling her name. two things that will turn her on instantaneously <laughs> Because essentially, that's what little, um, erotica is. Erotica is something that triggers your brain to have to think. You have to use your imagination. Because, uh, you know, if you're not, you're just reading words. And mm -hmm. usually when typically people read, they get lost in the story. And typically why men don't get into erotica as much is because one, it's one of the things we don't need for our stimulation. Mm -hmm. You know... Honestly, if a breeze hits my pants just right, I'm like, oh, I got a bonner now, cool. Ready to go. <laughs> um, and that's why women lean towards erotica more. I love erotica. Like I will, I have gotten off many times reading a fantastic story because one, you know, having particular fetishes that are hard to translate to a film because like some of them are hard to film. You can get so much more in story, you can get more in depth, you can have more imagination, more suspension of disbelief, because it, the only limit is your imagination. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it is a much more intense orgasm if my brain and my heart are both pumping. So yeah. there is some science to this, fellas. I'm, I'm just telling you right now, if you haven't read Erotica, go out. You can get some smutty erotica. I'm gonna. I have a link that I'm gonna talk about my first encounter and probably the best source of erotica for free. And I might put that in the link in the description too. It's called Literotica. Have you ever I been like to Literotica? I go to nifty.org. Yeah, I go. I also go to nifty.org. Nifty. I've never been to nifty.org. Is nifty good at helping you lifty? Yes. <laughs> nifty good for a lifting? Um, yeah. I, I mean, there's some... I, I, I think it also allows... The difference between erotica versus visual porn is erotica allows you, the reader, whoever that is, um, to put yourself in that situation, to imagine yourself in that situation. You then become that you, you immerse yourself in whatever scene or uh, story is happening whereas in visual porn you're watching other people do it so yeah it turns you on but it's not the same as imagining yourself going you know, fucking 
however six ways to Sunday like it's mm-hmm. and I think that that is much more appealing to me um, because as much as I am a voyeur and and I like watching people I also just immerse I also have a very active imagination <laughs> so I I I I like imagining myself in those situations and immersing myself and that gets me way more turned on than watching somebody like every time and I absolutely can get um, get behind that because if you don't have voyeuristic tendencies um, mm-hmm. they're probably more prone to liking erotica for that you know, the suspension of disbelief the adaptation because like with a book you can interpret it many different ways you can keep it a very voyeuristic tale where it's like, you know, these are characters and I'm going to build a character. And I'm going to tell you right now, some erotica, even on the free erotica website, are books. They get detailed. They have the same character development as just a regular novel. And I think erotica is probably one of the most widely accepted forms of pornography because people don't realize it is, in fact, pornography. I mean, yeah, when... plus, I'm like, I'm like porn, and it's fancy little shops that may or may not be allowed in the town, even. All those erotic novels lining the shelves, whether it's a bookstore, or gas station, even, or, you know, Amazon. the local food line, <laughs> they're there, and they have been there since I was a kid. So, oh yeah. yeah, erotica has been around since probably since bef- before the English language was the language. It has been there in some form. Print the two two things most printed is pornography and the Bible. Yes, first there was uh, snoo snoo, and then there was erotica. <laughs> as soon as um, we learn how to write, we learn to secret. write about sex. It is. Everyone's dirty little secret. And nowadays, now that you don't have to show. Um, and now you don't have the and some people still love the physical books but now you have like your e-readers and you're on your phone you have all of you have that access you could be reading porn you could be turned on all freaking day long and nobody knows I'm just reading a book it's like it's the best like edging play you've ever had you know you can (laughs) strap it on your head or around your neck and they go hands free totally a full hands on experience of this reading. They also make audiobooks. I mean, yeah, but still. Uh, I've actually. Putting on the voice and the, the audio, imagining it in your head is always is still the, the, the go to source. Oh, absolutely. Um, I enjoy, like, I've heard some audio stories uh, told, and there's a couple, I, I couldn't even tell you their names, but send me, just send me links to, like, uh, my particular fetish and they're red and I love uh, probably one of my favorite pastimes with a couple like as a, as a couple with any of my partners reading to each other erotica mm-hmm. like it is very sensual to like lay in a lap and have somebody read to you it is both cathartic and um, erotic at the same time and kind of having that spun, you know story spun for you having like a little bedtime. Uh, and actually, the, you know, the best part about, you know, we do this podcast. We have somebody on this podcast who will be doing something very similar uh, coming up in the next week. Uh, I know I am sitting down uh, this weekend and setting up so he can do this all the time. I mean, but Rebecca's going to add more, um, more point things where she does sexy voice. I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> Um, but yeah so having audio stimulation with erotica still has that imagination because if you have someone with a pleasing voice like the other two members of this podcast I know I have a ridiculous voice and I sound like a cartoon character but the other two have (laughs) there there has been many much evidence to support that you Miss Rebecca do sexy hotline voice and Shep well, just normal speaking voice is hot, so... I know. I don't, I'm jealous right? of that. I actually have to try. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Don't let him fool you oh. guys. His real voice yes. is this is this is a clip of a uh, Shep's real voice. Hi guys, I'm Shep. This is how I sound. Day on and day out. Oh, why do the two why do my two boys on this podcast? Why do they hate taking compliments? I don't understand. <laughs> don't. <laughs> This is my, like, this, I, I found a new favorite thing of this new mic. I can do this. You can hide yeah. behind it. You can hide. I love it. my microphone now. <laughs> 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 he got a new mic prepping for uh, his erotic greetings, and I am very excited mm-hmm. about that. Yes, yes. So, which actually means that I have been doing research on erotica for quite some time because I've been finding appropriate stories for him to tell. Mm-hmm. Because, like I said, we don't want to get to too right? smug. Someone's going to be like bedtime yeah. story stuff, right? Yeah. I think uh, right now we have three streams planned for you. we got to find the appropriate times uh, for them. But one erotica, one bedtime, and one just, I'm Shep. Let's talk. Oh, shit. That one's scary. No, I think I think you could talk about things that you're interested in all day long. And I think the audience would be very into that. I think you start that one a little later, so you build that audience, so you are not talking to yourself. You are responding to your audience. Um, I need a lot of guests and taking on that request. show. <laughs> I will absolutely be your guest on that show, and I'll help you through it. I'll be your producer. I do not need that. <laughs> but when it comes read, to I know. We, don't we just, read too much into it. Don't read yeah. too much into it. But, but back to the, the topic at hand. This, I, I see this fetish as definitely being quite um, female oriented predominant. Simply because the graphic novels and such have been uh, female focused for as long as I've been alive. <laughs> I can definitely see males and those, those kinds of uh, such partaking in them, but mainly females because simply their orgasm uh, consists of physical and a mental uh, interaction system where men are just physical, so they, all they need is touchy touchy. <laughs> um, exactly. and you can honest, I I I have read many uh, erotic story in my life, and it is. Not, and I'm not going to, again, not a blanket statement, but you can definitely tell the difference between a man writing erotica versus a woman writing erotica. Mm-hmm. And it is, it's a stark difference because of just when a woman writes erotica, she knows, like, she knows how to turn you on mentally and she knows what she likes or et cetera and so forth. Or versus a man is, is very much, it's, it's just a different point of view and it's very, it's very different. Um, yeah. So it's very noticeable well, too. Not to mention target audience for said erotica. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, like I said, even though females are the primary, you know, your demographic, for this, uh, when it comes to like, okay, so I read a lot of fetish erotica, so like my fetish and all that, typically written to target men who have said fetish. Mm-hmm. So like, but yeah, you are absolutely right. The difference between a female writing erotica and male writing erotica, and if that target audience is female, which is the, the main market for it, Females will do better in that category because they know. It's having that knowledge of what turns them on. and That's just understanding science. I don't understand <laughs> science that well. I can just repeat what I hear. <laughs> um, but this is definitely one of um, my favorite kinks. Uh, unfortunately, I've been so busy here lately, I haven't even been able to breathe, much less pick up a book um but i also like the fact that um amazon and and you you can self-publish now so it's you're having um a much larger variety and choice now versus back when you know we were you know 10 20 years ago before self-publishing was really picked up 
was a thing, you you were very much limited to the internet or to whatever the publisher wanted poorly you Xerox, to do. Poorly Xeroxed. Right. Or poorly Xerox stories that you found somewhere through whatever. Yep. Uh, but now you now people can write their erotica and write these stories and get them published and get them out there. And it's it's a like it's a variety. It's now it's opening up, and I think that it's, it's a sexual awakening for a lot of women because now they are mm-hmm. reading these books and being introduced to these kinks and these fetishes and finding out more about themselves and who they are. And I I, I find that just very empowering and very awesome. So absolutely, and I like that we you know, and that's one thing I really want to talk to our male audience because about it and explain I wasn't mansplaining females how their organs are I was explaining to men because a lot of men they, we have no idea unless you are in tuned with like you know and openly talk which is not men's strong point uh, let's be real you don't know how a woman's body works you assume and you should never assume because it makes an ass out of you and every audience member that just said and me yeah, like I just <laughs> said. Um, and because you need to be aware that your partner, whether you are, you know, with a female or with a male, everybody gets turned on by different things and everybody has that chemistry. Know your science. Know how this. Use the tools God gave you. If you know you're with a woman, send her erotica. Go read one that turns you on really well. Let her read it. That approach is a great tool to build that bridge of kink. Absolutely build the bridge of kink because you have now taken an interest. It's like, you know, when she wants to go shoe shopping and you're like, I'll go with you. And she gets excited. Well, now you've done exactly that in the bedroom. And it's amazing. Yes. Don't just make and efforts then, to explore their body. Make all the efforts to explore their mind. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you, you'll thank you'll thank every you know you'll thank your lucky stars you did because that means your partner gets off harder, you will get off harder, and you'll have a tighter, deeper connection. A little erotica, I mean erotica, brings the world together. When you said tighter and deeper. Oh baby, tighter and deeper. I don't like the phrase deeper. If you want to hear why, just watch our live streams. What, what do you What do you think about like, uh, Mr. Becker? What do you think about like couple readings? Like, you know, sending your partner not just like your own erotica, but like saying, "Hey, what do you think of this?" Or send me some erotica. Um, I don't. I don't quite know. I guess it depends on the person. Uh, yeah. It really does. Uh, it's just like watching porn. Some people like watching porn together. They like that. And sometimes it's like working out. You sort of, it's like a solo thing. Um, I, I, I personally, um, I don't know, I'm on the fence about it. I think it's just one of my, I like, it's my dirty little secret. Like I said, it's, okay. it's, I like to know that I'm getting turned on and I, I'm getting turned on and nobody else knows I'm getting turned on. And then that turns me on even more. So it's, it's one of those sharing erotica is one of those if you wanted to sure but it's my it's my it's my present to you it's my present to my partner like here i'm gonna turn myself on and i'm gonna jump your boat later like it's just like looking at her and be like hey would you like to be my dirty little secret yeah (laughs) i mean and that is everybody has their preference you know and we can't explain that one that that is just a you either you know want to share or you don't and i fully get that the having the privacy to it uh, i'm not a private person i'm like here's my porn if you want it if you want to know please send me all yours i want to know what makes you tick uh that's why i like uh, sites like fat life i'm like no no i want to know everything about my partner i want to be able to get in that mind because yeah. i like the and i think erotica it does because same as watching porn it opens a window into your mind's eye mm-hmm. because the erotica I read is much different than the porn I watch. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, hundred percent. 
So that has been erotica. I mean, there's, I know this is a shorter episode, but there's not a lot to talk about the written word and how amazing it is. And you should go out there and find your erotica. And I will add the site to uh, literotica.com. And what was your site again? Nifty.org. 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 I'll add that in the chat. And guys, tonight, this was our next to last episode in the season. I know we've missed a couple weeks because of like, you know, accidents and live streams and crazy stuff like that. But this is the last episode and then we're doing the season three premiere and we'll be talking about subspace and what it is, like the science behind creating a subspace and why people react to it. And believe it or not, it is uh, scientifically very fascinating. It has very similar... um, uh, qualities and triggers as shock that I was unaware of. So I'm excited. It's going to be a fun science filled episode. Isn't that what you're traveling through whenever the warp engines kick in? From space exactly. To subspace? We're going. We're going to slip into subspace. Sweet. Subspace drives are going to be at full, and we will be talking about that next week. I am your host, John Dondero, and with me, as always, a woman that we would all love to read about. Rebecca. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. And a man we would like to. Volumes. I was about to say, and a man we would like to us read the story about Rebecca, Mr. Show. Bring me the words. Till next time. Mm. Good night, everybody.